Hello, good day, and welcome back. So, in this chapter, we're going to be wrapping up chapter 9. We've learned a lot about time types. Not time, types. We've taken quite a big bite out of, um, you know, go by learning about types. So, it's time to sort of move on now and start doing more things with the types that we've learned and what we've learned about the types and interfaces. So what did we cover in this chapter? A whole lot. I have most of it on there, but there are probably a few that I've missed, but these are the key things. Um, unnamed types. Um, we talk about that. That's when you use, you create variables or expressions where you don't specify the type and you come up with some kind of complex type, like a slice of string, you know, array of some type, maps, channels. When you don't first name them, that's on name type. We did name types. That's when you, once you start off with the type keyword, that's a name type because you start with type keyword, give it a name, and then whatever the complex type literal comes afterward. Um, assigning between types. Two name types are totally different, so you cannot assign them even if they have the same underlying um, type. So that means that our type student ID string and type person ID string Person ID and student ID have two different um, types and cannot be ver uh, variables of those two types cannot be assigned to each other even though they both have the same underlying type string. But if you have a name type and an unnamed type, you can assign between them. All right. Um, keep in mind that when the types are really complex and not just string, but there's like structure, the structure must have the unnamed structure and the name structure must um, or the name type that represents this structure must have the same layout in terms of the same field name and the same order in which the things are de defined. Implemented interfaces. We talk about this. Um, when you have a type, you can implement its interface and then you get a method set for that type. And so for any type X, I can do a method set for type X. Okay, let's change it. For any type T, I can do a method set for type T and I can do a method set for star T. And the one thing there, which I don't have here, is once you implement the interface and you add method set on star T, method set for star T includes the method you define for star T plus the methods you define for T. Okay, so let me say that again. If I have a type T and I implement some interface on T, the method sets for T are those implement interfaces, I, the uh, methods I implemented, all the me methods I implemented for T. If I implement some methods or I implement an interface for star T, the method set for star T is all the methods I implemented on star T plus all the methods I've already implemented on T, or if I later on add them. Okay? So we went through and we showed why that is the case, because if you have a pointer to something, you can dereference it and get back to the object, hence why the method sets also include those for the pointer. And then we showed that how, even though when you think you have like an object, you can't always take the address of it. And a good example would be if you have a map of some type, you can't take the address of the map of you know that thing until you pull it out the map. So that's why it doesn't go the other way with um, when you have an object. We talk about the empty interface. This is the one that allows you to be like the magical wrapper for everything. Using a variable of the empty interface, you can assign any other type to it. Basic types, built-in types, whatever types you come up with. And then how do you know what's really being hidden behind that variable when you use an empty interface? Type assertion. And not only when you have an empty interface, it's also when you have any interface type. So if I have a duck interface and I have a method that takes duck or a function that takes duck, and then I have person who can implement duck, I have Indian runner who can implement duck, and what avail as three types that can implement duck. And then inside the method, I want to know which one am I really dealing with? Well, um, I can just use type assertion and figure it out. All right. So those are some of the key highlights from the, this chapter. So what are we going to do next? Now that we understand and play with type quite a bit and learn how to implement interfaces, in the next chapter, I'm going to be covering two interfaces from the Go standard library. And that's the IO reader and IO writer. We've already played with the um, stringer interface. But now we're going to play with IO reader, IO writer. And that's going to allow us to go on to using the look at the FMT package. 
uh, we've been using the FMT package without really explaining it. But once we play with IO Read and IO Writer, and now that we know about interfaces and types, when we go to study the FMT package and see some of the other methods in there and functions that it provides, I think we're going to enjoy it. All right, so that's it. Um, just a short wrap up and review and preparing for the next set of videos. Take care. See you. Keep subscribing. Keep spreading the word. Have a great day. Bye.